Hey guys, I'm Double D, and today I'll be showing you the basics of using a real API in your web application. If you're not sure what an API is, I recommend that you first watch my video about basic web development concepts where I talked about APIs among other things. You should see a link to that video in the top right corner. And if you're too lazy to do that, for the purpose of this video, it's enough that you understand that an API is a service that provides you, the developer, with real-life data from a database. This image briefly explains the role of an API. You can see that it is a connecting point from your app on the left to the database on the right. Getting real-life data is the very core of many apps that exist today so knowing how to use an API can be very useful. So without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code as my editor. As you can see, my source folder has two subfolders, one for JavaScript files and one for my CSS files. And I also have the index.html file. I'm going to open the index file and since I have the Bootstrap extension installed, I'm going to type b4 dash dollar sign. Then I'm going to press enter. And this will generate the basic HTML code snippet. And then I'm going to delete the parts that I don't need. In the head tag, I'm going to reference my CSS file. And in the body tag, I'm going to reference my JS file. And I'll also put some text to see if all this works. If we now open this in the browser, we can see that the page works and this means that we're done with the basic setup. Now it's time to choose the API you want to use. For this video, I'm going to be using the Rapid API website. If you're using it for the first time, you're going to have to make an account. Once you do that and you log in, you're going to see a bunch of available APIs. You can see the popular ones, the recommended ones, or you can search for one if you're looking for something specific. When choosing an API, there's one thing you should be careful about, their price. Rapid API has three types of APIs, free, freemium, and paid. The ones that are free are completely free to use and you can have an unlimited amount of requests. If an API is freemium, that means you can use it for free but you have a limited amount of requests you can make. This limit can be on a daily or a monthly basis. Finally, you have paid APIs which require you to pay upfront in order to use them. Most paid APIs give you the option to select a plan for example, here you have the basic, pro, ultra and mega plan. And they're fairly cheap. Needless to say, paid APIs provide high quality data, they have the lowest latency and have few to no limits. But for this video, I'm gonna be using a free API just to showcase how all this works. However, if you choose one of the other two types of APIs, make sure to track your API usage because if users of your app surpass the request limit, you'll have to pay extra for each request they make. Anyway, for this video, I chose a free API for quotes. Each time I send a request, it's going to return a random quote. By the way, when you select an API, in the top right, you can see its popularity, latency and success rate. You can also see its pricing and you can select the plan. There's only the free plan for this one, so I'll go ahead and select it. This will subscribe your account to this API and make the process of using it much easier. If you go back to endpoints, here on the left, you can see what kind of requests you can send in your app. For this API, there's only one get request and that's the one that's gonna get us a random quote. Usually APIs have multiple GET requests as well as POST or PUT requests. Once you've connected your account to the API, 
you can click on test endpoints and on the right side it will show you an example of what you can get when you send a request. For this API we got an object containing a couple of these properties such as ID, language code, content and URL. We're not going to be using all of these, we just need the actual quote and the quote author. If we go to the URL and then originator, we can see the name of the author. Now that we have chosen the API we want to use, we're ready to start using it in our app. If you go to code snippets, you can see the code that you need to put in your app in order to make the request to the API. You can choose the programming language you need. In our case, it's going to be JavaScript and we're going to be using the fetch function. Copy all this code and paste it in the JS file that we made earlier. Again, if you want to understand how this code works, I recommend watching my other video about basic web development concepts. But for now, it's enough to understand that this code will fetch some data from this link and then log it in the console. So if we start this app, we can see that the page still looks the same. But if we look at the console, we can see that there's a response object. This object has some properties, but it's not the data we're looking for. We want the actual quote object. So in order to read the actual data from the response stream, we need to use the function JSON. Now, if we start the app again, we can see in the console that we got the object that we're looking for. It contains the quote and the originator. All we need to do now is display this data in a nice way. If you're a front-end developer, this object right here is all you've been looking for your whole life. Once you got that, the show can begin. By the way, if I want to access the actual quote from my code, I can write something like this console.log response.content and when I run the app it's gonna log the quote itself in the console. Now let's play with some CSS and make this quote look good. I'm gonna skip this part because it's not what I want to focus on in this video however if you're interested in seeing the actual CSS code the whole project will be available in the description. There we go, that looks a bit better. You can see that whenever I refresh the page, I get a different quote. I just need to make sure that I don't refresh too fast because there's a rate limit for this API that makes you get only one request per second. And that's it! That's the basic setup for using a real API in your web app. If you're interested, there will be a link in the description to get the source code. However, if you decide to copy the code, you'll have to make some changes to it. If we go back to the Rapid API website and look at the code snippet, we can see that in the fetch function we're using these two headers, the Rapid API host and the Rapid API key. The Rapid API host is unique to the API you choose, so each and every API on this website has a different one. And the Rapid API key is unique to the user, so when you make an account, you're assigned a new key. If you want to see your key, you can go to My Apps in the top right, then select your application, and go to Security. This is my application key that I'm using for this video, but I will delete it right after I record it, because I don't want anyone else to see or use my key. You should always hide your API keys just like you hide your passwords. There are many reasons not to share your API key with others but one that is very obvious is that if someone uses your API key they can easily exceed rate limits and make way more API requests than permitted which can cost you a lot of money. There are many methods for hiding your API key but I'm not going to go into detail about that because it's not the topic of the video. I'll see if enough people are interested and maybe I'll make a separate video for that. But for now, the very basic thing you can do is to not include your API key 
directly in your code. I've made a config file where I will store my key and then I will import it in my code. This way when I publish my code on GitHub or something, I will publish everything but the config file. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, if you decide to copy my source code, you'll have to make your own config file and import your own API key. Last thing I wanted to do for this video is to show you another project example for using APIs. I made a simple app where I'm using three different APIs. One is for Chuck Norris jokes, the second one is for currency conversion, and the third one is for getting the latest COVID-19 data. Now I'm not gonna go through my code and explain everything, I already showed pretty much everything you need to know, but this is more to show you that there are so many different APIs out there and the possibilities are endless. Maybe this inspires you and gives you an idea for your next app. Anyway, here's the page. And if we look at the console, we can see the raw data that I got from the APIs. And this is how I decided to display the data. For the first one, we have a random Chuck Norris joke. We have his face on the left, and then this button that fetches a new joke each time you press it. Also, if you click on the link that says want to hear a joke, it takes you to the website where all these jokes are pulled from. The second API is for converting one currency to another. You can see that a euro equals to this many US dollars. And if I type USD to Australian dollars, we get the result of 1.38. Pretty cool stuff. Last but not least, we have an API for the latest COVID-19 pandemic stats. You can select a country and you'll get information about new confirmed cases, total confirmed cases, total deaths, and so on. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and learned something new. If you have any questions or video suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.